There it is. It's in progress. It. So welcome everyone on uh, the YouTube and on oh, YouTube. 15 minutes of podcasting without you guys. So if you want to hear that, you can go back and listen to it at vinnytotters.com or iTunes or Stitcher or anywhere you get your podcast. We're there. Uh, we were playing a little music and YouTube doesn't like when we do that. You see, everyone else can put music up. But if we put music up, apparently that's an abomination. <laughs> I don't understand True. how that works. So um, there you have it. We're here now. We we're talking about Jane Fonda. And I'm going to tell she you. She ain't got a motor on the back of that Honda. Jane? Uh, no, that's that's Anna? a lyric from Sir, Sir Mix-a-Lot. Really? Jane Fonda ain't got a motor on the back of her Honda. My Anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hon. And then there's a whip sound. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will say, I'm going to, get, I'm going to give uh, Jane Fonda, I'm going to end on a positive note. The movie oh, Barbarella. I, that was great. Oh, she showed some boob in that. Yeah. That was some and, early and, boobage. And the spaceship, uh, or the, the whatever the boss, was it her spaceship or her boss was called Duran Duran, which is where they got their name from, Barbarella. Yeah. yeah. So for that. Um, by the way. I you don't wonder, redeem yourself, if, Jane, but I'll give you a pass. I wonder if KOL uh, played that song, Strut, over at, I call it KOL now. You know what KOL is? Do you know what? Do you know Kings what Kings of Leon? Is that a no. band? Yeah, it's a band. But it's also, do you know what KOA is? Camp. No. Yeah, yeah. The K Camp stands play? for campground. Camp. Okay. But that's a weird, why? Right. They started with the K. Is, is, you used to see them all over the nation. Yeah. Campground. Yeah. Whenever you take a road trip, you'd see them everywhere. Right. Campgrounds of America. That's where they KOA is. They might. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. I, I, they probably are. Check it out, Anna. Let's see if KOA. I call it KOL, Camp, Campground of Leona. I wonder if they played that at Campground of Leona. Oh, I should have known. Campground of Leona. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to find out if they had that song. All right, what's happening on Twitter? Are you throwing the songs out there and then she's rating them? Or is she throwing the songs out there with a rating and then you need to play? It? Like, how is this working? I, I, she sends whole playlist on uh, Spotify. Or a Stitcher, or one of them. I can't remember. Okay. Maybe Spotify. <clears throat> and um, yeah, this song may or may not be. I, there's some Bob Seger stuff on that thing. So I'm guessing Strut would be on there. And right after I do this ad, I'm going to tell you my Jane Fonda story. I think I've told it to you before. I'm not sure. I don't want to talk about Jane Fonda anymore. I want to I get wanna to tell my Jane no. Fonda story. I got you. Please. No. I, 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 Anna, I, you know what? Why are we giving her airtime? We've been talking about her for like half an hour. She, this won't be good airtime for Jane Fonda. Folks, Bell Campo, bellcampo.com. Bell Bell Campo has got some meat on their bones, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. If you like a curvy roast, a little rump. Yeah. You like yeah. A, a meaty ribeye. Oh, yeah. You like a, some ribs. Some, yeah. Oh, you got the meatballs. Oh, yeah. Plump. Everything you Delicious. need. And you know, uh, I, I noticed, you know, I mentioned people, I said, you know, I, I said the other day, why are you guys just getting to a hundred bucks? You save 15% on the, I noticed a lot of people because I see all the, the numbers coming in. A lot of people have been ordering two and $300 worth of That's stuff. That's good. I guess they all you might realize, as well wait, because then you get the free shipping. You get the free shipping and you're going to go back in a week or two anyway to get more. So why not just get a big order and get the big savings all at once and get the free shipping? Um, what they do is if you spend more than $100 after the Vinny discount of 15% every single time, uh, you get free shipping. So if you spend like 120 bucks, that'll put you right over 100 bucks free shipping and you'll get the 15% discount. So that, that, that'll take 17, 16, $17 off. And uh, it's a win-win because this is not second rate meat. This is exactly what you want. Go check out Bel Campo. Everything there is unbelievable. Anya Fernald, go follow Anya Fernald on uh, Instagram. Your mouth will water. Food porn. Yeah, it's food porn. And you know what? Anya is pretty good to look at. I don't know if you, Anna. She, is it a discount code, Vinny, or is it like belcampo.com? It's discount code when you get to check out. So it's okay. bellcampo.com. When you get to check out, put in promo code Vinny for that 15% off every single time. Bell Campo. Um, anyway, 
Anna, uh, but, but, but uh, I just want to finish up. You don't want to talk about keto wheat flour? Oh, we're going to get to that. We shall get to that. But Jane Fonda, you know, when I first got to LA, you know how it is when you when you first get to LA, you will do anything and everything. Right? My, my thing was anything, everything short of porn. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm with you on that. And if it was porn, I, I'm still pretty much to, that way. Bring, bring it to me anyway. And I'll take a look at Can it. I wear a conch shell, then okay. Yes, like, well, yeah, I, I look, I'm the fact that they got me to model a conch shell is yeah, that, that's proof that you'll do anything. There's more embarrassing photos out there. I'm shocked no one else has ever found those. Um, because my when you're a model, your name is not on things. Right? So most of the time, they can't find it. Um, but early on, you know, I was there trying to get stuff going with uh, Disney with Nickelodeon, you'll go wait, why those? I saw childhood obesity on the rise in the 80s. That was the reason I went to California in the first place. I needed to be closer to the industry. And I had these ideas. And I did go I, I took tons of meetings at Disney, CBS, ABC, uh, NBC, uh, Nickelodeon, uh, Sony, all these different places. They were they were all interested in me. And I was like, okay, then we love your idea. You know, we think kids are going are, are getting fat too. This is when kids were just putting on a little weight. Right. But they were like, yeah, we love your ideas, your child fitness. And I was like, yeah, we could get some of these young Olympic girls, like the, the, the ones that, you know, like the gymnast and all this, they're still very young. And, you know, we can motivate kids to, hey, you could be just like, you know, this girl or that skater or whatever. Right. Or you could you guys, you could be like this pole vaulter or this great guy that I was going to bring people on and show people, look, they were kids, too. And look where they are now. And just a big old motivation. You know, I had these ideas and these shows. Everyone loved them. And I even said to him, hey, guys, I don't have to be in the shows. We don't have to put my face. As a matter of fact, I wanted I more so wanted to be behind the camera. I wanted to write and produce because that way you can make a lot of money, you could do a lot of good, and you can still walk around in relative obscurity. And that was my idea. Uh, I never thought I had a voice for on camera. I never thought I should be on camera for any way, shape or form. Alas, here we are. Um, <laughs> but that was my game plan. It's like, if I have to be on camera, if I have to show up to make this go, that's fine. Otherwise, I'd rather be writer, producer in the back, you know, coming up with this stuff, finding the people doing all the stuff. That's what and our mutual you rather put friend, it together. Yeah, our mutual friend, Nancy Wolfson, she and I were working on stuff together all the time. That's how you and I got introduced was through her. And um, Andy Schreiber and I were working on stuff together. Yeah, turns out all of these people are still in my life over 30 years later, because at some point, when I got something, I just called in the people who were there for me at the beginning and said, Hey, would you like to do this? Would you like to be part of this? It's just the way I work. Anyway, early on, as you know, I was doing infomercials. You know, every time Guthrie Ranker called, if the product looked halfway decent, I did it. Right. Um, then all of a sudden, uh, because I was getting out there, I was getting somewhat of a name. There was a thing for aerobic dance. Mm. And I was like, okay, I just like not being able to sing. I cannot dance. You're not going to do the moves. But I had an aerobic class back in New Orleans back in the 80s. What I did again, I, I was the first aerobic class where for the first half of the class, I would take these women and their little Jane Fonda leotards with the little scrunchy socks and a little scrunchy on their head to match. That's what it was. It was scrunchy socks. They weren't really leg warmers. They were right. socks made to look like leg warmers. They were, made to look they like were like super warmers. thick socks. That's right. Well, it all kind of started you need to get your Reeboks a half size up to wear those socks. And, and that was the other thing. It, Reebok was like the worst tennis shoe in the world. But that's I what never had Reeboks. Doing. Trust me, I coveted them, but my mother was not going to buy me no Reeboks. I'll tell you that much. Oh my God. It, it was like they were white, white, please, white, white, white. They were like, buy me Reeboks. No, they were bright white. And um, mm -hmm. anyway, I was at Newman School. I would take them through a circuit. They, you know, they would do a weight circuit. That was back when women didn't do weights. And then after that, I had, I would bring these aerobic teachers in and pay them more than anyone else in New Orleans would pay them to come in and teach 
just for a half an hour. So they were like, hey, he's paying more and you only have to do half the work. So I would do a half an hour of this, half an hour of that, kick him out. We were done. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even stay for the aerobic part. Uh, these women I had hired, they were great. They were wonderful. And uh, it all worked out. I was making cash. I was happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I find I, I get this an inside on this audition through a woman I met at Gold's Gym. Um, now, remember, the body I had back then was the conch shell body. Hell yeah. I was getting a lot of work. A lot of work. Um, You're just asking for that picture to make the rounds again. Well, you, I'm just saying that that's the body. As a matter of fact, um, I had a couple of opportunities when I looked like that to to stand in and do stunt double and all that for Stallone. Believe it That's or not. Amazing. Yeah. And by the way, I just remember that this is a story about Jane Fonda and I love this story. And I just know once you bring her up, it's going to ruin the story. Well, yeah. So I'm, I'm living in that Am world. I right? yeah. yeah. I'm living in that world and I'm, I'm making really good money and I'm way outside of my, my comfort zone because a, I'm not a model and I was making a hundred plus thousand dollars a year as a model. Right. Number one. Um, I was not, uh, I was on screen sometimes doubling. I was on, uh, if you remember, I was, uh, I would get under five, you know, explain what under five means, Anna. Uh, it's just different tiers of speaking roles. If you say even one word, you're no longer an extra and that's called an under five, five lines or less. Usually it's on an after show. Right. Um, and if you're, a, if you have more than five lines, you're called a principal. If you're there for one day and if you're there for more than one day, you're a guest star. Right. So you know, on after show, SAG was a little different. Yeah. I, 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 when they brought Baywatch back, they would call me and a couple of other guys in because some of the actors had little, you know, punches on them, especially uh, Hasselhoff. So, and some of the he, scenes. He was drinking in the hiatus. Oh, and, and a lot of scenes, you know, when they would shoot a slow motion of running in the water and you would only yeah. see the thighs. And, and that the was you? It was me. There was a guy named Rock. That's and, awesome. was, and here's the thing. They didn't want me to have the shaved chest, but they were shaved. They, they would cut the hair down and because right. do so, they wanted us to match look the, like the other stuff, the other people. And if you look at that show closely, you'll go, wait a minute. And, you know, <clears throat> and I got to tell you this. That's and awesome. folks, if you I go didn't watch, know that you did that. That's yeah, cool. If you go, if you go watch the video of this, you'll see what I'm talking about. They, they would always have us on second unit. Explain what second unit is, Anna. Second unit is everything that they don't have the first unit for. Like they shoot what they call B-roll, meaning like the shots of the beach or the shots of other just randoms on the beach or the ocean right. or the waves that they cut in. Usually they cut in for transitions or sometimes if the scene is really bad or they have a technical issue, they'll cut in some B-roll. So second unit comes in and shoots all that stuff. So guys like me was always on second unit which is great because you get to F off and there's a lot yeah. of really hot looking young female models. And one of the things they would have them do almost every time I was there is they would set up a volleyball net, but it wasn't set up as high, you know, but in Hollywood, they cheat things down to yeah. work for the camera. So the net wasn't as it's high as make the actors look taller. <laughs> Right. Well, it's not as high as it is in beach volleyball because none right. of these actresses can spike over the net. And one of the things they would do is, you know, the cameras on one side of the net and they would have a bunch of like hot girls and skimpy bikinis on the other side and they would get a PA. Explain who a PA is, Anna. Production assistant who's the plebe on set. The lowest, uh, lowest guy on the totem pole. Yeah, yeah lowest he, guy on the totem pole. He's the guy right paid, up from the guy that gets sure. coffee. Um, yeah. He would be on that side of the net with the camera and he would toss a volleyball over and all the girls had to do was this. And I got I to gotta step back a second. But okay, you, you got to watch this on YouTube, folks, if you're listening. They, they would either have them do a bump, you know, right. like a, a bump. hands together. Mm -hmm. As soon as they bumped, they wanted them to turn back to the camera and jump up and down and clap like this. So their boobs would jump up and down. Half the time, tits were flying out of bikinis. I'm sure. Because they would go more enthusiasm, more. We need more. The, they, they weren't doing anything <laughs> except getting B roll for them to go watch in the back and wank. Yeah. And, and these girls, and sometimes they'll say, okay, they will get these girls. And by the way, they would give them the bikinis. This is part of wardrobe. 
Right. So they would get, and then they would have them do they, the guy of the PA would toss it up and they would have to do the, the, that, you know, pop it up like that. The but set. as soon as they popped it up, they wanted them to jump up and down and, and clap. Oh my God. <laughs> it was the perviest thing I'd ever seen. It, it was just, I bet it was awesome to watch. Yeah. And they had a young had, man. I, you're like, I have made it. I am living my dream. Yeah. It, it was great. And me and rock, they would go, okay, you know, the little red buoy that you have with the rope on it. Yeah. They, they would go, okay. And it would be, always be free. That water would be freezing cold. Right. Always, yeah. They'd go, okay. You need to run down the lifeguard ramp, just run down. And right before you hit the water, toss the thing and then dive in. And they would have us do, and then you would have to completely dry off. Do right. Dry your hair, everything. Do it again and do it again. Folks, this is how I made a living in Hollywood when I first got, I, I had no way of getting clients. And the way I started getting clients was when I was on those sets, I would talk to anyone and everyone who paid attention. Yep. Right. It, that that's how you make it in Hollywood. You you don't stop talking. And when you wake up in the morning, you get on a treadmill and you just keep running until that night. Well, on one fateful day, this girl that I knew from Gold's Gym, she was in a lot of the Jane Fonda videos. The exercise, she was one of the triangle ones behind. She was one they of- They always did a triangle formation. Oh, she, she was one of those. And she also was Jane Fonda's assistant. She was in, she was in the, the group. Right. Right. And she said, she knew me from gold. She kind of spotted me in gold. We became friends. <clears throat> Benefits and what have you. Anyway, um, and she goes, listen. Are you telling um, me you were sleeping your way to Jane Fonda? <laughs> pretty much. I was just sleeping my way just to get laid. You were sleeping your way anywhere. Anna, you didn't care where it led. <laughs> I was 29. Yeah. I'm Italian. Yeah. I'm in a candy store. Yeah. A vagina. What was I supposed to do? I, you know, I, I'm made of flesh and blood, man. I'm just made of flesh and blood. <laughs> you and Cuomo. I'm Italian. I can't help it. Is that, that what he said? I'm Italian. I could laugh so hard. <laughs> Pretty much. I can't help it. I'm Italian. The difference, the difference between me and Cuomo is I wasn't pretending I was something I'm not. I was just that guy. Right. And I think well, and hopefully any guy, you ask people for permission before you just groped them. That's always what I thought was so weird. No, and no, by no. the way, there are I, men who do that. And it's very, Anna, very I, weird. I can honestly it, tell you, like, I have never grabbed groped, somebody by their I've, titties. Hang it's on. Like, what? I've never groped a woman in my life. I know you didn't do that. And, and by the way, as a matter of fact, they would have to be overtly into me before like anything would happen. Like they would have to make the first move because I, I was just, you know, uh, that's just who I that's, am. By the way, that's most men. I'm not like. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm, but, I was never a groper or a beggar. I, I could not imagine begging a woman to sleep. I, I, you know, I see the movies and all kinds of it makes no sense to me. Anyway, so this girl, she tells me, she goes, okay, here's the deal. Jane's got, she's doing a new video and she wants to bring some guys in. She, because there was a guy named Jihad or Jihud or Jihid or whatever. And, you know, he was, you know, making a lot of ground. He had a television show um, and he was this buff looking guy and he can dance and do all this stuff. And do you, you know who I'm talking about? Shahid, Jihad, Jihud, something. And uh, he was on a beach and he was dancing around. He had on the tights and the muscle shirt and the whole thing. And uh, she goes, Jane Fonda wants to bring more guys in. And she wants some really muscular but she goes you fit the bill you're exactly what she's looking for and i said to this girl i don't know how to dance i can't dance i, I serena will tell you i beg her when we go to weddings i see it. she's made you dance you can dance oh my god she made me dance at peter pardini's wedding just let her let fact, her lead i've seen you guys dance it happens. I, I, Anna, I don't like, I, I, I look weird. I, I, I no, feel. You don't. You're fine. You're totally fine. Like, I, I'm happy she's not coming with me to Gina Grad's wedding because she would. Pull now you can just sit things. on the side like a lummox. I could just sit dance. there with Dr. Drew and just, we could sit there and talk about how much we hate the world. Okay. So, <laughs> um, God, I hope he's been invited. <laughs> I don't even know. Sure. If um, yeah, I'm sure Drew is invited. So at any rate, 
She goes, you're a shoe. And I said, I can't. She goes, I'll teach you every move. I'll show you every move that think of a montage scene. I spent hours. I would hours pay hours. I, I would pay, let me, let me say upwards of $500. If we had footage of you learning how to dance in the eighties set to music, I would pay $500 to see that. It, it would be, uh, you, what's that Frank Stallone song? This is the end. <laughs> da, 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 over. <laughs> I was thinking more I'm like, like, she's a maniac, maniac. On no, the no, floor. no. It would be more of the Frank Stallone song. Um, um, what, what was that song? Um, now I got to look it up. You're right? the best around. Nothing's going to ever keep you down. It song. I don't know. I don't know what the Frank Stallone song is. It, it was in Staying Alive, you know, the movie. Oh. All right. So, Bill, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, right. but the song is called Far From. I think that so. All right, I won't leave it until like I don't want Bill to have to cut out too much. Doing footwork right now. She's trying to teach you how to do a jazz square. Yeah, yeah, and I'm falling and I'm yeah, pulling the shoelaces ground. Yeah, get untied and yeah, and everything. Yes. Yeah, I'm just a mess, and I'm like, I can't do this, man. I can't do it. And and you see me at and night. And by the end, you're like, step ball change, step ball change, doing your aerobics moves. Yeah, bafasi, bafasi, ba. Yeah, bafasi. Yeah, like I, you know, at the beginning, I'm you know, every night I got ice on me. And then the next night, when we get to that part of the montage, I have ice on both knees. Yeah, and, and you're bloody for some reason. <laughs> and then you see me dipping down into an ice bath. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just doing the whole thing. And, and yeah. all the time in the background, you got this. She, she's female Burgess Meredith. Well, this song, yeah, yeah, pretty, well, pretty much, except... Yeah. I wouldn't fuck Burgess. Um, never say never. Okay. By the way, his last name. Say it again. Burgess Meredith. You know, I can't say his last name. Say it. <laughs> Meredith. This is where my Meredith. sediment still kicks in. Meredith. All right, wait, if I think about it really hard, I can do it. <sighs> Burgess. What's his Bur name? Burgess. Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith. Okay. See, okay, Mer you got there though. You I got to slow it down. I We're gonna have a training down. montage with just me teaching you how to use your R's, and well, it's folks, okay. Folks, if you want to know how bad it was when you think I'm kidding about my speech impediment, there's still certain words still that we'll never words. go to. I cannot. I sound like a deaf person when I say Meredith. Meredith. I can't do it. That's all right. I can Meredith. Do Meredith. Say, yeah, there you go. Mer say Mer. 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 Dith. Dith. You see, but it, it's still you did it. I, my tongue still comes completely out of my mouth. Can you mouth. see the TH sound? There, you Meredith. See, it's not where it should be. The tongue is yeah. in a different spot. Meredith. You see, I there can't you do it. But you're getting there, though. Yeah, but if... It, We're just going to do four more hours of speech pathology for the rest of this podcast, Okay. Yeah, and you know, while we're doing it, you know, we, we could play some montage music. Um, anyway. Just we, so you know, I do the equivalent of uh, what you did in the movies. I do the vo vocal equivalent of that. The voice matching. I've voice matched like hundreds of celebrities oh in the God. thing when they can't get them in. <laughs> so, and I, I don't know how in the hell. And, and again, the most boring, like you can't tell anybody or talk about it. There's nothing really to say. Except for like, oh, cool, you do an impersonation of that person, basically. Okay. There's a lot of time. But I made now. a lot of money, and I still get a lot of residuals from a lot of movies for doing that. You know, if I meet someone with that name, like a woman, because mm -hmm. a lot of women used to be. Um, what are you going to do? Well, what I do is I, I say Mary Beth. I can say Mary Beth all day long. What if? What if Serena comes home one day and she says, I'm going to legally change my name. To Meredith Serena. I would, I would have to either kill her or break up with her. I, I have two <laughs> I love the killer is the first choice. I, I would <laughs> I would go with hey you. I, I'll push her off a cliff and then we're done. Right, that's it. So, that's so it. but you know, the first. Line is, there was a girl. Her dad was um um her dad was the guy who was the voice of Donaldsonville High football. Mm -hmm. Mr. Like McCoy. the live announcer? 
Yeah, yeah, he would do all the games. His favorite thing was whenever a flag would hit the ground, the yellow rose of Texas is all over the field. Um, his wife, Miss McCord, was the one that figured out she was my kindergarten teacher, my preschool teacher, figured out I had a hearing problem. Oh, okay. They had a daughter named Mary Beth, but the other word. Mm -hmm, Meredith. And isn't it funny that I still can't say that name? I can't, I can't do it. I don't think so. I think it's probably just a practice thing. It is. And there's other words that I can't say, so I just shy away from them. You know, there's well, a lot there's of certain time. words I have a hard time saying, and I pray that they're not in scripts. I think that's very normal. Whew. Yeah, but that I, one. I do, and I do it for, I'm supposed to be able to say everything and, you know. But that one gives me, I get the heebie-jeebies on that one, because when I said Burgess, you notice how I just stopped, I mean, Burgess went, and I just kind of fluffed off because I couldn't, I couldn't get there. I just couldn't get there. So anyway, you were training. She was Burgess Meredith, but hot. That's when I started going to the stairs. You were Rocky. Santa Monica. Like everybody would go to the stairs in Santa Monica. Yes. And like, if you did 10 rounds, you were like some kind of weird here. The first time I went out there, I did 20 rounds. I did double. And I've never Adorable. done, I've never done less than 20 rounds. It got to where I would do 60 rounds on those stairs. Gross. I, I was ripped I'm to sure you were. reds when I showed up at Jane I Fonda. Bet. Not only was I training to learn the aerobic steps all day long and how to Jane clap while you kicked your feet back, you know, you know, all, all this. Yeah. Stuff, <laughs> your feet back I love on. you acting it out. Uh, Jane Fonda couldn't do 60 rounds on the Santa Monica stairs. Nobody can. But that was the beginning of me doing that's some ultra. Jerry Rice shit right there. That's and amazing. I, I, I would go, it was, I was spending my, because I had a lot of time during the day. I didn't have clients yet. I was living off of these paychecks. Yeah. And um, I knew the routine because I had the, the, the girl, she was a friend of mine and I knew the routine inside and back. I could, I could do it in reverse. Cause you gotta remember, and I was an athlete. Could you do it now? Like if, if I come to Virginia and we hang out and we drink, will you, will you do the routine? Cause I want to learn it now. Okay, maybe. But you got to come here and we got to be drinking heavily. Okay. Like I, I got to be into, deep into a second drink. I'll always have a dance party if I'm drinking. So if okay, you teach me some aerobics. You got to understand moves. these, these moves. And they, th that's when they were starting putting steps in there. The early days of step aerobics. Yeah. Like said, Reebok step, hadn't even it, really it, made steps yet. It, the whole it, thing. And it, she was introducing yeah. all this. And Anna, just like with football, the reason I was good wasn't because I was talented. It was because. I, I would do everything forwards and backwards. You worked hard. Because yeah, I, I am not naturally good at anything in my life. Nothing has ever come easy for me. Yeah. And I knew that this could be a big break for me. And um, when I got there and I auditioned and then they brought me in with other people and they had us audition together and we auditioned on camera with Jane and we, we were doing all this stuff, right? It was just all this stuff. And um, I was making it through every level, right? I was just getting pushed through. And like so many other guys were like, dude, you are, you're a shoe in, you know, like all the other girls there that worked for Jane, I was a shoe in, right? It's like, you got this. I was like, I, and I just kept working and working and working. And then um, the girl comes over to my house and she's got this solemn look on her face. And I said, I didn't get it, did I? And uh, she goes, no, but I, I need to tell you why. And I said, why? And she said, you're going to think I'm bullshitting you, but you were too good. You were too <laughs> good. And, and I said, okay, that's the biggest pile of bullshit I've ever heard in my entire life. Biggest, she goes, when Jane was watching, you know, because Jane is a control freak, you may know that from your job <laughs> or not. I don't mm -hmm. know. You're being quiet over there. Mm -hmm. She is a control freak. And right. you could tell that when she was there that she's all business. She is not absolutely warm and fuzzy. This woman does not know warm and fuzzy. And she 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 might raise her voice a bit. But you see, again, football player, I was good with that. You know, I was good with all of it. And when she was watching it, she took two or three guys and she goes, those three, they will never be part of this. I was one of those two or three. And um, when she, she was talking to her assistant, she goes, those, those, some of those guys are the best guys. What are you doing? She goes, this is my gig. I'm the queen of aerobics. 
I'm not going to let some other dude come in, just like this guy on television. I wish I could remember his name. His name was like Jihad or something. I don't think it was Jihad because that's like a war attack effort. It's like a Muslim. Uh, Anna, Anna, look up famous TV male aerobic. The show was on for years and years. She oh, goes, it, was it the guy who trained Cindy Crawford in her music, in her exercise video that I, I owned maybe, on VHS? Maybe. Raj, maybe. Rajad? <sighs> Rahad? Look up, look up. Hold on, I'm looking up Cindy Crawford exercise video. If it could, yeah, I think and, it's that guy. Yeah, and we got to find this guy because she, Jane Fonda goes, th those three guys, out. I wasn't the only one. It could have been five guys. It could have been two. It could have been, I don't know. She goes, those guys are out. I'm not going to create more competition. That, that was her word. So that's why we didn't make it into the video. She, she wasn't, she didn't want us to see how easy this was to become an, a TV star. So she just X'd us right out. True story. Wish I, I, I'm not good enough to make that up, folks. I'm just not good enough. What are you pulling up, Anna? Let's see. Um, 80s. I'm putting in 80s. Radu. Radu. Is it Radu? TV. Hang on. I don't know. Um, might be. 80s no, TV. You keep looking. When I walked into her office, because we were there to have a, you know, a little powwow before, during the, between the semesters about marching orders and the plan, the program was going so well with us teaching, we would teach at the middle school in the morning and the high school in the afternoon and had these kids. And what they did was they put kids who didn't, they cut all arts programming at the schools, right? Right. And so Jane Fonda got her rich husband to put money in, she was married to Ted Turner at the time, got him to put money into this performing arts program for youth. And it was based on a, a curriculum from a guy in Boston, an improv based curriculum. Well, I am the queen of improv and went with my other fellow improv people and we taught. And uh, it was a very rewarding and difficult time in my life, but great for a 23 year old fresh out of school to be teaching improv to kids who did not want to be there, you know, and then you get them, get them. It went so well. These kids did a great show, both the middle and it was supposed to be increased and they were going to hire more teachers. And uh, I literally walked in and she goes, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm here for the meeting. She goes, you're fired. You don't need to be here or you can stay if you want. Wow. I was like, and I was literally like, that was my first, it was good. It's a good experience to have that as a young person to just have somebody just hand your ass to you for no good reason. And uh, then the, the program director called me three months later and was like, the, the, uh, we made a mistake. We need you to come back. And I was like, sorry, I'm already doing something else. But uh, I was just like, fuck that lady. Fuck that lady hard. Unbelievable. And it wasn't because I was too good. I did do a good job, but she didn't care. And there's more to the story. Um, did you find him? Is it Radu? No, no but no. Uh, I, I should have put Radu. Did you look up Radu? How do you spell Radu? R-A-D-U, -R trainer. I, I found everyone else. Uh, you know, the, the guy that comes up more than anything else is, um, of course, uh, Richard Simmons. Oh, where is Richard Simmons? Nobody knows. I, I, I feel so bad about he's, that. He's not okay. Well, while you're okay, looking- Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here, here's the guy. Uh, but I, it doesn't say, I'm looking at the guy, but it's not saying his name. Well, you but you found a picture of him? Yeah, it, it might even be a video. He, he was such, he, he was on, I know people are going, it's so-and-so. He, he was such a big deal for a long time. I don't remember. Tim? All right, wait, wait, I think. Must have been before my time. I, th I think I have his name here. Wait, hang on. I, I think, <laughs> I think I know what, what this thing is called now. Hang on. All right, Anna, th this is a long search, but we got to do this. We don't have to. We no, have no, to I don't think you understand. <laughs> All right, hang on. Do, do an ad for um, Villa. Okay, I'm going to do an ad. I'm going to talk about a really great product. And then we're going to talk about something that seems so suspect. We're going to talk about my trip to the grocery store where I took a million pictures of, I couldn't believe it. It's like keto explosion at the grocery store is what happened. Anna, hang on. You found it? 
Okay, I wasn't very far off with Jihad. His name is Jalad, G-I-L-A-D. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty close. You know, I, I when so you can't say Jalad, not you know. So, I'm gonna go to villacapelli.com right now, Vinny. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look for. God, too bad you don't live close anymore. I would order us both some oil. Okay, Anna, hang on, hang on to that ad. It was called, folks, if you want to go look this up, it, the guy was on for like 30 years. His name is Jalad. He was on what? It was called, it was his show. It was called Bodies in Motion. He pro it's probably on YouTube. And, yeah, yeah that, I'm looking at it on YouTube. And he would just kind of march in place and do this whole thing. And Jane Fonda was like, I don't want to create another Jalad. That, that was her. Is it like Walk Away the Pounds, Leslie Sansom? No, if her? you see the guy, you'll see he looked exactly like I looked back when I had hair. And back when I was muscled up, El Jalad, G I L A D, it's called Jalad's Body in Motion. The guy he Jalad, might still be, have Jalad on demand. Yeah, the he's guy. The thing. Yeah, he's been around forever, and it was driving. Her. Shout out to Jalad. He looks yeah. very fit. He Look is. what he's doing, $9.99 a month, free 14-day trial. Good for Jalad. The, the guy knows how to, he knows how, you know, and that was the, she goes, she was yelling, I'm not going to create, and apparently. Did she create Jalad? Is that what happened? No. She had? The reason she was doing other stuff was because she couldn't, she hated that this guy was getting bigger than her. She was the queen of the 80s. Now we're in the 90s. This guy oh. just came up. And now you have three guys that look like Jalad that's in there that's all muscled up. And I was doing 60 rounds. You know the stairs in Santa Monica? Oh, Joe, Joe Theismann trained with Jalad. So now I like Jalad better than you because Joe Theismann trained with him. Well, there you go. <laughs> look, Anna, it, you know, Playboy, I was supposed to do a thing with Playboy, and then they did it with O.J. Simpson, and then he kills his wife. You know, I, I brought that. I, I said I came to him with an idea I had called Minimum Maintenance for Men. And, what was that? Oh, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. We'll get to Villa Capelli. I'm loving this show today because. <laughs> and keto explosion at the grocery store. And by the way, if people think that I just happened overnight, I, I was doing this for fucking 40 years yeah, before totally. anything happened. 40 years. Um, excuse so, me. I've been doing improv shows. For, I've been done over 4,000 improv shows for 35 years. So please. Do, uh, don't you You're love natural people, on the mic? Where have you been? Yeah, it's like, how did you got? It's like, how do we learn all this? We've doing been doing it for forever. four drunk people at midnight at IO or Second City. Look, I, I was talking the other day about the Barbie twins. I'm on, on the Adam Carolla show. I met them on the stairs. That's how you know. I, well, I met them at, at um, I met them actually on the set, uh, yeah. on the sheer set because I used to do her show. That's right. And then they we ended up going to the stairs together all the time. But here's hold the on. Jalad, Jalad, Galad, Jalad. I don't know how you say his he name. He looks like who's that guy from the eighties? It's not Adrian Zmed. Adrian Zmed. He looks like Adrian Zmed. I don't know who that is. Yes, you do. Adrian Zmed's on a show. But you you get why you know he's muscled up and he's moving around and the whole thing. And Jane Fonda's going, no, he's already out there. I'm not bringing these guys in. They're they're too good. Adrian's Zmed was on TJ Hooker. Adrian Zmed. How do you say? Oh, M E D. Here he is. I'm glad we're doing this kind of show today, Anna. Because <laughs> he was. Oh, he was on Bosom Buddies. Okay, no, no. Uh, this guy, Adrian Zmed looks nothing like that guy. He does. He looks like Jalad. Yeah, uh, may, maybe back in the day, but. Jalad, if you look at Jalad back in the day, he was really good looking. He had he looked like a bodybuilder that can move. See, Vinny, why don't you do nine ninety nine a month for workouts for streaming workouts? Should can make a zillion dollars. Look yeah. At Too lazy. Um, <laughs> so Anna, th this is what was going on. Th this is the stuff we had to fight against. You know, the Jane Fonda's of the world saying. No, can't, I'm not going to create you. Right. And it wasn't just me. It was me and a bunch of other guys, like two or three. And by the way, we all looked about alike. And I think that's why she didn't want us. 
but well, and and that's the whole thing in this business too. It's like trying trying to uh, keep your dignity when you walk into a room with fourteen other people vying for the same role who literally look, look exactly like you, and you're like, okay, it's it becomes at this point it's a head game. It's, and how walk- do you take it when those kind of disappointments? Because by the way, there's way more disappointments in this business than there are successes. There and everybody wants times. to talk about the successes. There were several times when I would show up for an audition, if it was a speaking part, I didn't want to go to begin with, because I have a wonky sounding voice. I'm I'm not made to speak. Right? I have to become my own personality to to speak. Right? I don't sound commercial ready. When I speak, there were several times I would walk in. And there was a guy there named Shadow Stevens. In the same audition. If Shadow Stevens was there, I would just turn around and walk out. Do you know who Shadow Stevens was? I, I know the name. Is he a radio personality? Oh, Anna. He owned your business at one time. He was you being a VO person. I can't believe. Oh, there it is. Shadow Stevens. He yeah, he's a radio really, guy. Yeah, he was really good looking. Um, he actually was the voice on like um, uh, Hollywood Squares. Yeah. Women loved his he voice. Was an so announcer. Much that yeah. they put him in a square every now and then. Oh, like he would make it into a square. Yeah, that's where that's him. probably where I remember him from is if, it, if, he, if you were on Hollywood squares, I probably saw you because I thought that show yeah. was just delightful but when I, was I would 10. walk into an audition. If I saw Shadow Stevens, I would just do a U-turn and walk out. It's like there's no way they're picking me over Shadow Stevens, the best voice ever. It's like <laughs> it's like if you walk in and um, Mike Dawson is there, right? Uh, you, you don't beat that voice. Right. It depends on what they're looking for. Well, they no, were never looking for. See, a here's the thing. It's that. different. It it. Uh, I'm talking about when you literally are going up against people who sound exactly identical to you. And then it's at that point, it's like, well, it's a numbers game. She's going to get this one. I'll get that one and she'll get the other one. And. But we know going into a room with Mike Dawson, by the way, that's how I got my first promo job is that they saw every promo guy in town for this CBS show called uh, Swift Justice with Judge Jackie Glass. <laughs> and I guess she was supposed to be like a Judge Judy type. And yeah. they were literally yeah. like uh, over at, at the CNN building at World, Worldwide Radio, which is where they did all the radio promos for all the shows. And it was 2010, 2011. And they said, uh, we've seen everybody. We've, we've heard everybody in town. And I, I, I hate that line because I'm always like, no, you haven't. I guarantee yeah. you there's at least a hundred more people who would kill for the opportunity to read right. this and including me. And here I am. And, uh, and they said, uh, that's how I got it because I didn't sound like an announcer guy. And that's yeah. kind of well, the start you, of promo career. But trust me, you have a very clear voice. I don't. And, um, yes, but, but what I'm saying is if, if I walked into something where it needed a model or something like that, it would be horrible. It's hell on earth. I've only ever done one print modeling campaign for Lyrica, which I believe we were recording the podcast at the time. And it was, it was soul crushing. And I don't know how you survive them just being talking about you like you're not in the room, but also about your body flaws. It's very disarming. Well, you know, the big thing I would get is in between jobs, the hair would start growing back. Oh, I, I'm and, sure that you got feedback on that. Oh, they would go, you were walking. Folks, think about this. You were walking to an audition. You're standing there. Uh, a couple of people are sitting in chairs and they'll say, OK, take your shirt off. Can you imagine? And, and half of them don't even look up. They're eating a sandwich. Take your shirt off. You got some fat guy sitting there with mayonnaise coming out of the side of his mouth. Yeah, totally. Going, take your shirt off. And then they, they'll look at you and go, Thank uh, you. So <laughs> they'll go, um, why aren't you shaved? And you're sitting there going, uh, uh, I, I just had a gig four days ago, razor burn. I just, I, I'll shave if I get the job. So you didn't really want the job. If you came in here looking like that, you didn't really. My agent to told me talent. 20 minutes ago, I was across town doing a different audition on Pico. Now I'm in fucking North Hollywood doing this. When am I going to shave in the car? When, when am I supposed to do it this? It doesn't matter because you're disposable because there's 14 other guys in the room who look just like you who are ready to take the job yeah, who, and who don't have razor burn. Even have hair. You know, it's. Oh, but that see, that's why you're glad you're not in this business anymore. And, and Serena wants to know, why are you still so angry? 
<laughs> I know you did start off as America's angriest trainer. Now we know why. I know. It was like, yeah. And any amount of time in the uh, entertainment business. And if you have any sort of conscience or uh, feelings, you'll know why. Yeah. I mean, if- it, 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 it makes you tough for sure. But then also there's some things you're just like, oh my God. You know, when people go, why are there so many homeless in LA? It's like, because they lost their minds. <laughs> they, they were did. all good people and they just <laughs> fucking lost their minds. And they I would venture to heroin. say too, you and I got through it relatively unscathed. There are some people who have some really horrible experiences and you and I just had to, let's face it. We both have this same uh, button of injustice. And when somebody says something stupid, it's really hard to not fucking say something. <laughs> it's common sense. Yeah. And a lot of people who are, who are, if you're good at eating shit, come to Hollywood and try to make a, a career for yourself because you will have to eat shit. Oh, you better <laughs> be the to best shit eater in the world. Oh, <laughs> that's the other thing. You're listening to people with no brains whatsoever. Look, I talked about the first chapter of my book. I get called into Gallon Maury. The only reason I'm in there is because Nancy Wolfson, who was a, a an intern, and not an intern, but she, she was an assistant to, Sandy Gallon's boyfriend, who was also an agent there. And he goes, we need to find the best guy in town to get weight off of someone really fast. And Nancy goes, say no more. And she built me up as the quick weight loss expert. And then she called me and said, get here now. Like, right. right oh, you now. have to be able to drop everything you're doing. And I was like, what is this? She goes, get here now. Like, right now. I came in, I had like cargo shorts on maybe a hole in my t-shirt and the whole thing. <laughs> I walk into a boardroom with, you know, the big table and the whole thing, Sandy Gallon sitting there at one end dressed to the nines in Brioni suit. And, you know, I'm looking around and there's people from Disney and the whole thing. And it's like a scene out of a movie. And I walked in and I was like, I looked down at my feet to see if I had flip flops or tennis shoes on. I, it was like, do I at least have shoes on? But they probably like that. And Hollywood likes that. They like they like uh, talent to come in and be a well, little irreverent. I, I, suits, I mean, yeah, they, they were like casting would have yelled at you. If you had to go through a casting director, they would have yelled at you. Look, but if, if I, you walk into the suits, they probably like that. They're like, ooh, Anna, he owns if I had is. known about this for like two or three days, then I would have gone home. I would have cleaned up, put on my best clothes and all that. Right. It was like, you need to come here now. And I get there and they were like, so, so we understand that. Um, you know how to get weight off of people really fast. And I was like, you understand that? <laughs> how do you understand that? And but they, they were very interested in that. And me taking weight off of Margaret Cho. By the way, they're, they're showing a show right now, the history of the sitcom on CNN. Yeah. And they showed, you know, the uh, uh, the Margaret Cho American Girl or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was wow. called. It was called American but Girl. Yeah. American girl. And, and they, and she talked about how she had to lose weight really quickly. And I go, Lauren, that was Vinny. He took the weight off of her. Well, it was way, very exciting. Well, since we're telling my whole Hollywood, how I got noticed in Hollywood, I took 30 pounds off of her. I talk about this in fitness confidential and they, they called me back in the next time I went in, I had clothes that didn't have holes in them. Right. And um, they said, look, you've done an incredible job but she's still not, you know, her, her face is too heavy. No, but that's <laughs> also having an Asian face. That's what I said in the Give book. A round right? face on camera. I said, you realize she's Korean, right? She's got a big moon face. And they all went, you know, like pins hit the table. And they went, hang on. Uh, we want it to be known. These are not our words. These are the words of Mr. Tortorich. We did not say that in this room. <laughs> we want this to be, I'm like, I'm looking around going, but she is Asian. Mr. Tartar Rich is talking about the fact that she is. They, a by the way, and the whole thing. I was they like, showed clips from it and she looked adorable and she did not look fat at all. And her face didn't look crazy like at all. She looked great. Well, I thought she looked fantastic because I, I was looking. I was like, oh, what? he took a bunch of weight off of her. I thought she looked adorable. So what happened after that was when they, I, I took another of course, Hollywood would off. be like, your face is still too fat. Oh, well, I took Even though that's literally eth your ethnicity is like having that right. shape of face. I Ridiculous. took 60 pounds off of her. When when she went out to do the show, you know, I was there at the first taping of, of, of the, the first show. It was a multicam, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, a, it was a regular sitcom that they were, yeah. you know, 
uh, Gary Jacobs. At that point, Ger Gary Jacobs was the showrunner and producer of the show. I was already training his fiance. Uh, I was on a Rolodex back when these back when they had Rolodexes. I was on everyone's lips in Hollywood. When Margaret Cho came out, she came out in a robe. And the audience went nuts because she she had done all this promo around this. And she goes, the reason I look like this is because of this guy, Vinnie Tortorich, and she pointed to him in the front row and had me stand up. I got a standing ovation from <laughs> people. And I'm like, is this really happening? That's nice. But when yes, she went out, it's a far cry from being rejected by Jane Fonda for right, but this, wanting this to make all, the next gelad. By, by the way, this is all around the same time, mind you. And I was part of Margaret's act, folks, you can go find that because she used to do a joke that said, I look like this, but I sound like this because she looks Asian, but sounds American. Mm -hmm. But when she would go, my trainer, Vinny, she would go, make no mistake, he looks like Vinny and he sounds like Vinny. <laughs> right. And that was that he was can't say point. Meredith. He can't say yeah, he can't say Burgess's last name. And the other the other thing is, is that when she went on on Letterman, the Tonight Show, um, um, what was his name? Arsenio, who, 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 she yeah. went on all these shows. And they were like, Margaret, we've known you for years. You're a very funny comedian. You've lost 60 pounds. How did you do that? This guy, Vinnie Tortorich, every agent in town, at, you know, ICM, CAA, mm -hmm. um, uh, William Morris, they were like, every one of them, you know, get get this guy, get him, get him on speak, get him now, get him in right. here. I was having meetings at ICM, William Morris, all these places, not to become a thing, but to train their clients. That's sure. how I became the trainer to the stars. I don't know if I've ever told that story before, but no, we've never really talked about that, right? You and I have talked about it, but I don't know that we've talked about it. And we and you didn't for a while. You didn't want to go into detail about the Margaret Cho stuff. Was that you? Because you didn't mention her name in the book. Uh, yeah, I wanna, apart, you feel like enough time has passed. You can bring. Well, it up yeah, and you know, Margaret. Um, you know, I I got upset with her because. She said a few things that were not true about me, about, you know, because the show failed and it was like sour grapes and she started blaming everyone. You know, I guess that's what you do. I get it, man. She had a lot of pressure. Um, I'll never forget. I ran into her in West Hollywood one day at a supermarket. And it was during the time when she was telling everyone, you know, they had me doing all this stuff and they had this, guy just yelling at me and screaming at me, Vinny. And I think she even wrote about it in the book. And oh, I know for a fact that you don't scream at anybody. Yeah, I'm like, scream and yell. Really? I didn't I didn't I never said one word about what was actually going on and what I had to do to get her out of bed in the morning. I never talked about any of it, nor show will I ever. And I ran into her that day. And I think by that point, she had cleaned up her act. And uh, she was like, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, you know, and I was like, No, we're good. And I haven't spoken to her since but she was the beginning of my career, because of Nancy Wolfson pulling me into a stupid meeting. That's how happenstance happens. You can get ready to do this Jane Fonda thing, you can have, you know, you can have your Frank Stallone music ready to rock and roll, you can have all of that. You could think I'm going to get this job left, right and center. And then five minutes later, you walk in with torn cargo shorts and not sure if you have stains on your T-shirt from dropping espresso on it that morning. And the next thing you know, every agent in town is looking for you. That's that's how that happened. So. I don't know why we got into that, but that became the whole show. <laughs> I did. I want to save keto wheat flour for next week. Yeah, no, because it's going to, it's, that's a whole show. It's the whole, and, and I'm going to continue to take more pictures at the grocery store because it is an explosion. It's a keto explosion. And it's, we need to delve trash. into that because people are asking me more and more on Twitter about all of that stuff. Yeah. And we can't give a short shrift and we, we need to really no. do it. I want to do the whole thing. We did not do a Villa Capelli ad. Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. You guys need to have it. It's it's absolutely delicious. You go to villacapelli.com and they still have the three liter tins in stock. It won't be that long. I, it, I'll i be honest with you guys. 
there's two different discount codes. Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, gets you 10% off your order. So let's say you're just getting one three liter tin and a bunch of the salts, which I also love. The grilling salt is amazing. Uh, it's a new invention from, from Steven. Um, or if you're going to get two, just two tins, you can use their BOGO 25 at checkout and you get 25% off the second tin, uh, which is basically 12.5% off your whole order of two tins. But if you're going to buy a bunch of other stuff, use the Vinny code, V-I-N-N-I-E, and get yes. 10% off. Uh, yeah. I fried pan-fried steaks last night and did the, you know, the peppercorn sauce. Mm-hmm. And... But I start the steaks because it was a uh, chuck roast steak. So they weren't as fatty. So I drizzle the Villa Capelli in there to get the heat really going. Fry the steaks in it. I fry vegetables in it. And when I say fry, I mean saute. Uh, I'm not deep frying anything because I, w- I don't waste my oil on the deep frying. But I make chicken cutlets when, in the pork panko uh, stuff and put that in the Villa Capelli. Use it raw. Do, the, do it in your marinades, do it in your salad dressings, do it in, if you're going to marinate your vegetables here, everybody's asking what to do with your zucchini. I'm going to tell you right now, slice it. I know what to do with my zucchini. Slice it the long way and then put it in your vagina. No, slice it the long way. By the way, Paul inspired me to say vagina in the middle of the ad. Yeah. Can we all agree on that? Yeah, but Paul was quite the man. For a gay guy, he loved the vagina. He, he, sex. Remember we just called him sex? Yeah, he yeah he looked like sex. He was he was just sexy. He just had that. Yeah. Mm. Women women wanted him, but only guys could have him. That's and right. He, and by the way, he was married for a lot of years and had. Oh yeah, daughters, he's got three so kids. Three kids, yeah, yeah. For, um, yeah he was quite the guy, man. Awesome. Oh, Slice awesome. your zucchini, soak it in the Villa Capelli, salt and pepper. Throw some basil on there. Throw some mint on there. Throw some garlic powder on there. Grill it real fast. Eat it. There's your little summer side vegetable for your steak or your pork chop, or your chicken, or your thigh, or your, your lamb chop. I don't know. Make a zucchini in the Villa Capella. Use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, not with a wimpy Y, 10% off your order. We love them. Every time. And mm-hmm. I'm going to cut the video off now. Okay. Folks, if you want to hear what we're doing after this, you need to go check it out elsewhere because yeah we, you know, go to vinnytorters.com or somewhere else so maybe i should cook next week why not we haven't done that in a while